two of the most important games ever made, period. Today, join Steven, Jacob, and myself, Brandon, as we find out which one of these legendary games moves forward in our tournament. It's The Legend of Zelda A Link to the Past versus Super Metroid on this episode of Video Game Fight Club. Woo! This is a tough one. This is much tougher than the last one. Yeah, the last one was I just, fun. I just, I just realized my, 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 my stomach started going. The, the last like, one? Oh no, we gotta talk about two incredible games. The last one was Bananas. It was Bananas. This one is, uh, this one's a little more Cirrus. Well, yeah. Um, so, once again, a mismatch in genre. Mm -hmm. A little bit more, believe it or not, so we did Chrono Trigger versus L Legend uh, of Zelda, Zelda, and those, that's a little bit more, I think that's a... Uh, uh, that was a very good matchup. I think the variety in those, or the, the difference in gameplay, is a little bit further apart than Super Metroid and Zelda. Even though Metroid is side-scrolling and Zelda is overhead, you're still um, oh, like, I see. You know, exploring kind I of see. an open world and kind of going mm -hmm. back and forth a little yes, bit. getting items on It's a little more comparable from Make... a gameplay perspective. Yeah. So we'll get into that. Um, but first... Right, let's start with the visuals. Visuals. Okay, now... Zelda is stylized and a little bit more chibi almost mm -hmm. in its pixel work. Yeah. Whereas Super Metroid is going for a very realistic approach. Mm -hmm. So much so that even in the animations, um, I've mentioned it before, being in the underwater sections, yes, every now and again the little bubbles coming out, mm -hmm. or whenever you're just kind of sitting there breathing, just the an the idle animations. Mm -hmm. um, I think visually I'm going to give the nod to Super Metroid because of the consistency of how detailed it is. Mm -hmm. Whereas with Zelda, it's really good. I mean, I'm not saying it's bad here. Um, it's just the attention to detail is a little less so. Mm. <sighs> this one is tough for me because I'm, ba oh, yeah. I'm basically in the ice babies. cream store having to choose between lime sherbet and lime sorbet. They both lime. They both taste good, but they're different in so many ways. And it's like, it's hard. I wore a big lime, first it's of hard. all. Well, that's just the first one. That's the first one that came to my mind. Lime, lime. Lime, lime sherbet's pretty good. It is. But I mean, you know you know how you like can't tell the difference okay. between a sherbet, a sherbet and a sorbet. A sorbet. Sorbet's a little more smooth. Yeah, exactly, exactly. Sherbet's you know? a little more icy. And so it's like, you know, you kind of have to look at it like, like, man, do I want the sherbet or the sorbet? And to be honest with you, they both taste the same to me. So I'm going to say it's Thai. Because also, it's too... They're, they're two different things, but they're enjoyable still. And it's tough to make the call. I'm going to say this as well. I believe that uh, Super Metroid is doing stuff with the Mode 7. And um, I think I think Zelda does a, like maybe a little, little bit, yeah. with like the Triforce spinning. Yeah. But I don't really think there's much else outside of that that mm. is doing this. I I really can't. It's it's impossible because I'm just sitting here back going back and forth. From a technical hand, perspective, Super Metroid me. is doing more like taking advantage of the hardware a little bit more. Um, mm -hmm. But I do think that um, the monster design and some of the boss characters specifically in Zelda is really good and I feel like it's inconsistent because the like the bad guys that you just find on the field are um less detailed because they're smaller sprites does that yeah. make sense yeah you know what I'm saying? that's just that's just the design choice they went with I mean, it's a different well it, I'm just I'm nitpicking I'm nitpicking I I'm, I'm gonna I'm mm, cuz you cuz when you said it it was the, the technical well, how about, how about like, like the, the the presentation of it not just how it looks but like how do you feel about like the menu system and stuff that's what I'm saying. I feel I like. I just definitely prefer Super Metroid. I, uh, mm, Menus. Because Super Metroid, I mean, you open that menu up and you go to your inventory screen, which I mean, it's just toggling things on and off. Yeah. But like having that, like it's pretty. It's like the, the diagram, yeah. that shirt that I, I wore yeah. in the last couple episodes. Um, that's really cool. Mm. Whereas with Zelda, it's just kind of like here's a black menu with all your stuff. Okay, cool. It's literally what it does. Yeah. I mean, and you could you could argue that maybe you have a sound maybe simple is better. Maybe it's like I don't need all this fancy mumbo jumbo. It's tied to me. I, I really I really can't choose. They're both they're both different. They're enjoyable. And they're they're just enjoyable to look at in so many different ways. I love the top down look at from uh, uh, from from the Legend of Zelda. I love how it kind of puts you in that perspective where you know you're just kind of you're just kind of watching things unfold from the sky and. Um, you know, you're going on that adventure with Link, and, and everything is animated in its own quirky little way, mm -hmm. to borrow your words. And then Super Metroid, I, I just don't have enough good things to say about it either, because it's got that mm -hmm. really good Frame, feeling. You just said animations, frames of animation. Frames and animation. Super, Super Metroid has way more frames They have more animation. frames. Yes. Also, I'm, that's, but. That's, 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 I'm, I'm going, I'm going one, 
Oh, I'm sorry, did he finished your I'm, I, but, but, but I mean, I'm just saying, you know, they do what they're supposed to do yeah. very well, yes. is what I'm talking about. Oh, yeah, yes. none of these look bad. I, I, I want to clarify that as well. No, 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 it's not bad. And I just can't say which one's, which go, one's better than the other. Go on Zelda. Go on Zelda. Fair. I, and I think I'm, I'm putting bias in there because both of y'all make good points, and it's just... As a kid, I have to I, again. I've said it a thousand times on this on this on this series. I've just got to go back to at that point. I've got to go back to Kid Jacob and what was more fun. And, and even as an adult, I kind of like a little stylized art game. I, I, oh, sometimes fun. serious looking games. That's fine. You guys played World of Warcraft for like thirty years. We did. Look, I love Wildstar. <laughs> Wildstar, and you do Wildstar's great. And that's a stylized game, baby, yeah, and it, it was is. a good game. Mm. But that's what I'm saying. I, I, that's that's where I'm like, like, do I want a um, a Guild Wars or like a uh, Final Fantasy where it's well, realistic some, looking, or do I want a Wild Star? Sometimes do I want ginormous hands this, like, like Arthas this, does. This, this is a total Orc shoulders. This is this is a total uh, sidebar. It has nothing mm. to do with the conversation at hand. But I want to say I think that's why the Super Nintendo ages so well is because you have two different. Styles like something that looks a little bit more serious and something that looks mm -hmm. a little bit more stylized and cartoony. Cartoon but whenever you get to the 64 and the PS1, yeah, it's like it just didn't age quite as well. Some of those things that tried to look more serious don't, they don't age very well, but yeah. the things that show early polygons to be a little bit more blocky and cartoony mm -hmm. look better. Right? That's what it, it's like the Zelda, the colors mm -hmm. pop, and I know that the, the world building, the dark tones for Super Metroid does the thing that we'll probably talk about oh, in dude. mechanics, which is the atmosphere we've talked about remember, a bunch of times. Do you remember that animation when the Chozo statue, like, melts off its metal and stands up yeah. and all the drools, like... Yeah. That's kind of... Well, just, uh, that's what I'm saying, the technical dude, prowess... The technical prowess... We're talking about that first, when it, like, yes. to get the Morph Ball bomb. To get the Morph Ball. Yeah. Or, yeah. To get the, the separate Super Metroid, just with, with you say, with Mode 7, when you see, mm -hmm. uh, you know, um, Samus's ship fly... Into oh, yeah. you know just stuff like Our that. Crocomire melts, melts and seeks down into the light. Right. It so, does have like, the bones, you know, um, the bones, the bones, the bones, bones. and stuff. Or like yeah. whatever you beat, that you go to the statue after you beat all the bosses, and the gyms are like, yeah. and then it just sinks down and, and reveals Torian. You go down there and you fight. I, I the just mother the mother brain part. This when is, the dude, it, the, it, it comes sorry. out. And it's like, <laughs> Sorry, I just, I'm, it's okay. Okay, visual. I, 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 I'm just I think saying I'm Metroid. trying to reassure my my choice. Metroid tie. I'm saying I'll end with this. I used to. We used to play the snot out of Mario Paint and go to the grid stamp oh, maker, yeah, and I would make Legend of Zelda sprites so cool. all day long and animate because you could you could actually have a book where you'd have Link's yeah. animations and you could. Animate. Oh man, that's and it's just I think that's where it comes in for me. So. Mm -hmm. um, oh, you're basing your pick off of another game. Yes. Uh, audio. Boo this man! <laughs> audio. Audio. Now this is tough. This is really tough because I feel like yeah. this is where I might have to say draw. Mm. Because <laughs> I think from a sound effect, sound design standpoint, they're both really... They're I, both think, I, think that's a, I think that's a draw for me because I love the sounds, the different sounds the swords make in Zelda as you yeah. level it up. Yeah. Each sword sounds different to give you not only a visual indicator, but an auditory indicator that your sword has changed and become more powerful. Sure. Um, I just like the, the sound effects in Zelda in general. Mm -hmm. I do feel like the variety in Super Metroid is a little bit more, just more stuff going on. Mm -hmm. Like whenever you do a shine spark and then mm -hmm. you're holding it, it's like... Wah, 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 and then you go... Uh, or just like when you when you get a game over and you explode mm -hmm. out your suit and you get that yeah. she screams out of it, it's yeah. kind of startling. Mm -hmm. um, the Ridley scream, that's a good one. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. 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 Uh, man. Mm. I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go. Maybe with, Metroid. I'm gonna go with Met Metroid. I think Metroid. Music wise. Slightest edge. I think music wise, I, I'd be willing to say that Metroid use. I think. I think the level of like the the track list is equivalent as far as like the quality of it. Yeah. Like, can I? Cause, subject, can cause I I've, I've talked about how I'll skip tracks. I'll, I'll think about which one I skip more tracks on. I think it's equivalent for these two. Mm -hmm. Which, by the way, as someone who's having to edit these videos, I'm yeah, looking yeah, at the I'm looking at the track list. I'm like, Zelda's is a lot smaller than I remember it being. Mm -hmm. It's like not a lot of music in yeah. that game. I think Super Metroid has more because it does a better job of using it contextual contextually. Yes. Say the word for me, Steve. Contextually. Thank you. I, but that's what I was kind of getting at was I think you guys have brought it up before is that I think the music is special in Metroid because it, it's tied to the world. It's a more cinematic experience. It's more cinematic. Yeah. It's building. Y'all have mentioned this mm -hmm. in other fights, excuse me, fights when, we, when Metro was uh, against other mm -hmm. uh, titles in that that set the tone, the mood, mm -hmm. where you felt like you were at, the planet side you were at, wherever, whatever level or area, mm -hmm. the, the music was tied very well to that and that blended them together. That's why I say Metroid just... And Zelda has a lot of good jingles mm -hmm. as Zelda, well. And Zelda's like, it's got a lot of jingles, like the like whenever you get the 
you know, talk about, or not just a da -na -na -na. like. There's a lot more jingles, more frequent jingles. Whereas with Super Metroid, you have the da -na 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 -na. Ooh man, just saving that game, and that that's how you save a game. Now on Super Nintendo, man, you go in, you do a little, yeah, click yes, and you go. Mm. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So, maybe I'll go with Super Metroid. Okay. So you're, you're swing. I, I need someone to swing me on this one. Yeah. This is tough. So, hmm. Mm. You want to know how I came up with my answer? I literally like I was going back and forth. I was like, I really like the sound effects of both of them. They both sound really good. So what I did was I just closed my eyes and I said, okay, what game can I recall the most music from that elicits the most emotional oh, response? Yeah. Mm. Emotional responses. So I started going through the lists. And, like, I found myself getting goosebumps for, like, every single one of Zelda songs. And I was starting to get goosebumps for every single one of Metroids, too. But there's one song that kind of stood out to me that I was like, okay, I'm going to go with this one with the slightest edge, and that is Super Metroid because they have freaking battle with Mother Brain. Or how about that whenever you go up to the surface after you've been there? Because, like, you know the first time you get to planet... Is it Zebs? You get to planet Zebs. I always Zebes, I think. Zebes. I think Zebes. You go to planet Zebes, and the first time you go there, it's just raining, and you hear the crackling yeah. of the thunder in the background. Super, like, mm -hmm. atmospheric. But then whenever you go back up there, it's the same as thing. And that song plays... Oh, dude. That one, too. Oh, dude. When you get the hyper beam... That's, it, oh, that's that's th those are two different songs though. But whenever you whenever you get the hyper beam and you get the same as theme. That part's really good. Bum, ba, 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 that part's the music in Samus is not. It's, and also, Lower Brinstar is probably one of the best tracks in Super Nintendo as a whole. That song is incredible. Whenever I'm editing or I'm doing some creative work, I always have that going. That mother brain boss battle theme is. Oh god, that's the one that did it for me. Honestly, so that's what I'm. That's what I'm saying. Me Metroid's music, us apart from the game, is iconic. It's important, but compared to other games, everybody knows the overworld theme to to, to Legend of Zelda, to Mario, and to Donkey Kong, and those are all great. But and I don't think. Compared to those, I don't think Metroid, just the music by itself, it, it's great. It's good. I'm not, I'm not knocking it. But when you put it into the context, the contextual, when you put it in those scenes. For base value, Zelda's more iconic. And, when you show up, yeah. and, and when you're playing Super Metroid, you show up right before a boss fight. It's got that, like, that eerie music that kind of plays. You know? Oh, the, the, um, oh I know the one you're talking about. Yeah. Oh, dude. Yeah. Uh, I, could, I, I don't want to confuse it with Fusions, because they did a really good job with Metroid Fusion, but Super Metroid... They're just the, the the music that sets the tone. It really does. Mm -hmm. It okay. really does. And the the, the music and the sound effects are so important in driving the narrative for Super Metro. Yeah, that's also, yeah. It's Thank you. Vital. Thank you. That that driving is driving the, the the narrative is good. But it's only a slight edge in my opinion, though. As much as I talk good about it, Zelda's got some bangers. Take a shot. Is. Take a shot. Look, um, look, all right. You said you said you said a keyword, so we can keep moving. Segway. We're gonna skip mechanics. Let's go to narrative. You said narrative drives narrative. narrative. Wow. I think this is where Ooh. I'm gonna say draw. Yeah. I've been thinking about I, this. I don't know if I can. Call I've been thinking this about this. One. One. What's really cool about Metroid, um, <sighs> in comparison to Zelda, is that Metroid is a continuation of, From, another, of yeah. another game yeah. or another other two games. It, 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 um, they're they're related in direct correlation. Because mm -hmm. Samus, Return of Samus on the Game Boy is a direct prequel. Like, Super Metroid follows it up almost immediately. Like, literally, yeah. they're like, hey, the last Metroid's in Captain Captain Eddie, Eddie, yeah. the galaxy is at peace. And that's because of the events of Super Metroid. Uh, because she of Return captured Samus. the suit last yeah. Metroid. So it's a continuation of a, of a much grander story, whereas each Zelda game is its own story. Yeah, it's its own story. And then, at this point in the Zelda timeline, they weren't even planning on it all being connected. Yeah. Um, so it's just kind of like they were their own standalone adventures. Yeah. But I do think that both of them... I think Metroid does a better job of giving you, giving you that precursor information because of that beginning text crawl with Samus talking to the player, which that's a cool shot, seeing her, her visor. That's another... I forgot about that. But you know they do that in Link to the Past? Yeah, they do it in Link to the Past, but it's like a skippable part. Like, if you're just kind of going through in the, the beginning where they're explaining... Which you should not do. No, yeah. they yeah. shouldn't. But I feel like they should have integrated it into the beginning of the game a little better. Yeah. Kind of like Final um, Fantasy does, where they kind of, or, or even Chrono does, where they have the, the beginning cinematic and the show and the, the cinematic. Yeah, no, that was more like a, yeah, that was a sizzle reel. That, but I'm saying like. 
do that. They yeah, could have done yeah, that with the story to explain it. I feel like it. explaining the, the it would have it would have captivated younger you know younger and audience. Better. Also, from a visual standpoint, kids don't want to read. Super, Super Metroid does the cool thing of like I didn't want to. She's telling you what's happening, and they show and they got the, the, the little the flashbacks. You know, talking about that clips part. from each game. Too. Yeah, that part's yeah. really cool, and it's from the game directly. Like you see, it's it. recreated in the in the. Oh, Super it sure is. You're right. It's, it's in the Super Metroid engine. Thank you. It's recreated. I was thinking it was it was pulled directly from those games, but no, you're right. You're absolutely right. It was in those in those engines. And that's one thing that Super Metroid did well. But oh, it's a big old B. Oh. But mm. it's me. I love the a Link to the Past story. I do. It is I, really I think good. I'm gonna give a Link to the Past the nod here. I think that, <laughs> yeah, I think the, the idea of what's happening in Yeah, in, in the kingdom in that world. Yeah, that's really cool. I, I love like there's just so much going on with it. I feel like they just hide a little bit of it. From yeah, it's you. not. I, I, that, that's my problem. Is it's not. I didn't. Ha, I didn't learn about that until older. Jacob. Also, I think, Jacob didn't I think Super. Story like I think Super. I think Super Metroid is you know of course more of a sci-fi. It's a sci-fi adventure, mm -hmm. and this is more like Sword and Shield, yeah, yeah, yeah. kind of a yeah, fantastical yeah, setting. Yeah, yeah. Um, two different stories. I say draw for me personally. That's I can't fair. decide between both of them. <sighs> that's fair. I would. I would say I'm leaning a little bit more on Zoro though Zorro. than I am. Super Metroid. And you see, and and I really like that Zelda did kind of a switch of on you. Spoiler alert! Spoiler alert! I mean, it's it's, it's a thirty year old game. La, 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 la. Um, but you know the way that they do the switch on Agnihim, you know, you spend ninety percent of the game chasing him, yeah, and then you defeat him, and then Ganon's like, "Hey, guess what? I'm here, mother lover, and I'm gonna take you out, boy. Come to the pyramid in the middle." No, he's like, "Hey." That was only 30% of the game! <laughs> you still have 70% of the game left to play! It does a JRPG anime game that, before it did it. Yeah. Like, <laughs> you thought you were done! You <laughs> damn been light into my lab! You got 60 more hours, kid. Good luck. <laughs> Like but, bad, but yeah. I love that. I love yeah. the bait and switch when it comes to games. Ah, yeah, you might, have, so you might give me just good. an edge now. Like, That's why I'm leaning towards it a little bit more, because I just like the yeah. idea there's a little bit more lore attached yes. with it. Whereas and Super I, Metroid's a little bit more direct, like, eh, there's that, space pirates, you don't really need to know anything other than right. that. They're bad, but they, they're but bad they, pirating. Like. Metroid presents it a little better, yeah. better than, than Zelda, but just the, yeah. the actual writing it's, and story uh, that is designed. I, I love that opening scrawl that explains everything pick, about, like, the ceiling war and how... Ganon was sealed yes. in the dark world and things right. like that. All that stuff. Yeah. Sealed. But you could miss it. You could miss sealed. it. Much like I probably did as a kid. Yeah, uh, I just... Mm, I say draw. I, I gotta say draw. Uh, yeah. I can't pick one or the other. I'm sorry. It's... Mm, draw. I, I think Zelda has the better story. It's mm. just I, how this game goes about presenting it. Yeah. I, if you said, hey, which one of these games has the better story... On paper, here's Zelda. here's the Zelda Hyrule Historia. Here's uh, the Metroid the, Historia, the Metroid equivalent. I'd probably be like, okay, this, is, this is better. File. This is better right here. It's just better writing, and I like the idea. The right. world, the this, world's a little bit more fleshed out. That's what I'm all about. that, but it's just you as a complete product. <laughs> as a complete product, I can't, I can't do it. So I'm gonna say draw for me. <laughs> Got it. All it's right. There. Well, let's talk. Oh, God, it took forever. So let's talk about one that's gonna take even more time. Maybe not. Mechanics. Woo. Super Metroid is one of those is a game that it's not requiring you to get every single thing. It's requiring mm. you to get a few key items, but the rest of the exploration up is up to you. Mm. And I do think that um, I had mentioned this on the Chrono versus mm -hmm. um, uh, little Zelda episode that uh, Zelda does have some items that are skippable. Yeah, um, but I think Metroid kind of experiments with the idea of sequence breaking and stuff like that with it. Yeah, and I'm gonna go with. I think I'm gonna go with Super Metroid for that reason because it's almost as if you're encouraged. Like they didn't encourage it back then, but it's basically spawned on a genre of speed running where you know you're almost encouraged to do the sequence breaking. Yeah, it's the, almost the as ending if the devs, bonus. Like, yeah, I want to see Samus in a bathing suit. Mm. I want to see her in her leotard. That's hard. Yeah, but I mean, uh, <laughs> well, that's the reward at the end. That's I the know. Um, Ooh man, well, look at them pixels. Mm. Ooh, from a gameplay perspective, I think. Genre differences aside, how about the idea that Metroid don't tell you nothing? Yeah. And it actually teaches you through the alien creatures. Yeah. The alien creatures yeah. teach you how to shine spark. They teach you how to wall jump. So there's one part where you're running and you just fall in a hole and you're like, ah! And then literally you're stuck there until, like, the game is like, you're not going to get out of here until you learn how to wall jump. Mm -hmm. It has these little things. We used to call them the Newton rats. 
and they jump, they go, rawr, 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 and they're like, they're like, wait a minute, what are they trying to tell me? Can I do that? And you're like, I can flip like that. Mm-hmm. What if I flip into the wall and then I turn and jump? The and wall jump in the is so broken. And then you're like, well, it's because you're doing it wrong. It's what, the wall jump is. You actually, no, I know how to do it now. Just, yeah, it was so you, hard to do that. Because most games, it's like you, you wall jump, you just you go to one and then you just tap the A button and jump. And this one, you actually have to do the D pad this way and then pivot it and then jump. Yeah. So the jump comes after. Um, but it, it shows you how to do it. And doing the shine spark, it's like the thing runs and it glows like you do. You're like, wait a minute, I can run and glow like that. And it goes, and it shoots up. You're like, wait a minute, what if I duck and I jump? Mm-hmm. And then you do it. It's like Mega Man X, you know, where it's, yeah. it's, it's yes. respecting you. Yeah, as a player. Yeah. Now, I'm not saying that Zelda doesn't do that, but Zelda's like, son, I'm dying. Take my sword. You can hold down the B button to spin around. <laughs> you know what I'm talking about? Yeah. It's the it's the game. That's how it presents I, the mechanics. To I always you. thought those were humorous, man. I just love that it's like, well, press the B it, button, like. I mean, it's at the end of the day, it's because you know these games were a little bit more games. geared towards kids, kids. But I think Super Metroid's a little bit more geared towards a mature audience. That's what. That's what. That, that's kind of where, like, looking back and through my kid goggles, I'm like, uh, mechanically, I'm going with, with Zelda. But as an adult, like that, like that thought and process. I think, I I think Super Metroid. Metroid was setting the bar for what non-linear gameplay could be. I'll be honest, that game be. frustrated me as a kid. Super Metroid? Super Metroid? Oh yeah, me I'm too. sure it did because it, it literally doesn't tell you anything. I kept getting you just, lost. You just kind of yeah. yeah, and that's the, yeah. that's kind of the point with that game is that it rewards you for being inquisitive. Mm-hmm. It re- rewards you for being curious. It yeah. rewards you for exploring. Uh, and it, what the reward is is it makes you stronger. You get more power, and you progress. And but I mean, if you weren't smart enough to be like. Wait a minute, what am I even doing? Oh, I killed that boss. That boss looks familiar. There's a statue of that guy. You go back to the statue, it explodes it. Wait a minute, maybe I need to go find more of these bosses. And then you find out, well, I can't go in this area because I don't have a... It's too hot in there. And then you get a new suit and you're like, wait a minute, I can go in there now because the suit... I, I Whenever I'm in a hot area, it don't hurt no more. Yeah. And then you go in there and you're like, wait a minute, there's Ridley, I have to fight him. Or there's there's Fantoon or whatever. And it's like you're constantly... It's it's doing it in a way where it's not like... It's just not a linear... Where like Zelda, Zelda's just like, hey... You need to go to all the dungeons. You can open yeah. up your map and you can see them. And it's literally, it literally says one, two, three, three four. four. Yeah. And like it gives you the suggested order to do them in. And at some point, like you can do Thieves Hideout before the forest and vice versa. Right. Uh, but there's only a couple of them that are interchangeable. But Super Metroid's like, hey, you just gotta go. Just go and figure it out. Here's a gun. There's a gun. <laughs> your arm is a gun. Um, so also, you're saying Metroid. No, I'm just talking. I haven't picked, <laughs> <laughs> I haven't picked yet. That's a Metroid. Um, but also, how about the idea of the different um, the different weapons and how they work on the different enemies in each game? Yeah. I feel like you are you get a little bit more rewarded for your experimentation in Super Metroid, Metroid yeah. than you do. Because at the end of the day, I mean, as someone who's just recently replayed it, I mean, the sword... Getting creative with the items is a little bit more fun than just hacking away at the sword. Because mm-hmm. um, I just found myself charging the B and spinning just because it did more damage. Yeah, um, throwing up, picking a pot and throwing a guy off the off the ledge. You yeah, know? I like to get a little bit more something yeah. like that. And it's only whenever the game presents those opportunities to you. Whereas with Metroid, you always have the tools at your disposal. Yeah. It's like, I mean, you think about it. That's kind of what inspired Zelda's going for, especially Breath of the Wild. That, yeah. that, that, that hey. We, we have yeah. weapons. You Super can use Metroid, them, but you don't have to. You Super can, Metroid is the progenitor they did that of in this a game. lot of different franchises. I think it's, it set the uh, bar. I mean, well, yeah. Metroid I mean, I guess that's I mean, my answer for most revolutionary. But uh, gameplay, uh, e- I don't know. <laughs> Steve says Metroid. What are you I, saying? I'm going biasly. I'm going. <laughs> Look to the past. I'll say draw, even okay. across the board. Sure. All right, let's let's move because we're we're, we're, a little, we're a little long. Sorry, uh, no idea. How that's okay. <laughs> we did narrative. We skipped it. Came back. Uh, something smells good, by the way. Um, let's talk good about. Let's just talk about what you just said. Revolutionary. Let's kind of skip around a little bit. We don't have to do it in order. Super Metroid. Gotta be Super Metroid. I will say Metroid. Yeah. Agreed. Um, we don't have to stick down now. Okay. What Ooh, represents it's... the console? Or yeah. Represents the console. I'll say Zelda. 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 Okay. Zelda. And then what? Is the stance test time? Draw. If I'm going back to a, if I'm going back to a Metroid game, I'm picking up Metroid. If I'm going back to a Zelda game, now it has to compete with the 3D Zeldas. But I think of the 2D Zeldas in a genre of their own. And if I want to play a 2D Zelda, I like can pass every time. I can pass. Okay. Like the pass every time. Uh, dude, I think I'm gonna agree with Steve and say draw because I think I'm thinking about the speedrun community. I'm thinking about how they have both these games have the most wild sequence breaks and stuff like that and they both have been yeah. just picked apart like like chicken bones when there's nothing left but bones and they still are incredibly 
replayable. Yeah. And like, even though that people have dissected these things, they're still incredible in their own right. I'm gonna say draw. I'm, I'm gonna go with. Uh, I'm gonna go with Zelda. Okay. All right. So explain yourself. <laughs> explain myself. Uh, no, 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 no. No, no. No. I explained it earlier. I just, I mean, yeah, you you can. It's a lot. Of, it's just biased. Um. Vote time. Vote time. Oh boy. Not me. I Look, this is this is so. I'll, I'll go first. Okay, go ahead. Wait. You know what I'm gonna say. I'll go first. I know. I'm going first. Legend of Zelda is my pick. So I'll go second. I'm I'm doing this literally just to spice it up. I'm going Super Metroid. Thank you. Thank you. I'm doing it just to spice it up. Y'all did that to me. Because I'm, I'm gonna I'm tell trouble. you right now. I'm gonna tell you right now. You guys. <laughs> <laughs> I'm telling you right now. You guys. When I play these games, you really would just have to ask, like, you would have to let me not play either of these games for, like, ten years. Y'all just want to, y'all want this episode to be two hours, because I'm probably like, about, like if, I'm finna take two hours. Hold on, let me, let me, if you took both these games and you moved them to the side and you said, Brandon, you can't play either of these for ten years. Uh, and like, you came back. Yeah, and then I came back. Yeah. Ten years. And then you asked me, then I might be able to give you an actual answer. But these games are so close to me. Mm-hmm. They're both just absolutely stellar. Yeah. Like, they're insanely good games. And I could easily just say Zelda right now and make it easy and not feel bad about yeah. it. But man, <laughs> I think Super Metroid is it, it deserves to be voted for is what I'm trying to say. Uh, no, I, I mean, it's in the semifinals, bro. Because I don't know what Steve's going to vote for. Mm-hmm. I know what you voted Steve for. Steve doesn't know what Steve's going to vote for. And I have to pick this because of all the points we just made. <laughs> yeah. It's a really I can tell you're leaning towards Metroid. I, I, a little bit, a little bit. But, I mean, keep in mind, I've, I've played... It really is just a, a mood. Like, what do I feel like playing? Mm-hmm. That's literally what it is. Because I have just, just recently, I'm talking within the past couple of weeks, yeah, have, really have finished the, both of these games. To be real, laying in bed on my I switch. I have it there. I don't know. I look like an idiot now. Oh no, it's a problem. I actually I turn it you off. Turn it off. <laughs> That's what I'm saying. I don't know. Maybe I'll just do it out of spite. Just, oh, thanks. Anyway. Yeah. Um, but I literally have like the glory of the switch, being able to play mm-hmm. the Super Nintendo games. Man, just laying yeah. in bed. Um, I've just recently. Played both these games and they're both really good. And that, that was like me with Yoshi's Island and DKC. And you know what's funny is when you look at people's top lists, it's either one of these two games. Yeah. At the very, very tip top. And I'm going Super Metroid. That's my vote. I don't want to talk anymore because this episode's going long. And Bra- editing Brandon's like, oh my god! <laughs> All I can think of is that, that <laughs> editing Brandon's like, shut up! Dave Chappelle <laughs> episode. How's it taste, mother? <laughs> All right. How's it taste? Steve, mother- you, you can take your time at this point because I can cut it if you really need to think about it. All uh, right, both these games are fantastic. They're amazing. They're awesome. He does a good job building. But it's, so it's got to be a link to the past. There it is. It's gotta be, I knew it's it. Got to be I a link knew to the it. past. And it's nothing against Super Metroid. I could pick Super Metroid. I could. I would. And in fact, if you'd have caught me on a day when I was in the mood for it, I'd have said Super Metroid. Super All right, the winner, Legend of Zelda: Link to the Past. I just spit. Sorry. <laughs> Zelda continues to prove itself, but will it take the number one spot? Subscribe so you don't miss out, and leave us a like on the video. Also, sound off in the comments on how you feel about these two games. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time.